So the formalities just about complete. I just wonder, Steve-O, I hope we've got your microphone working now. I just wonder whether, because they're already in the final, Australia just might come into this match a little complacent. No way, Eddie. I can assure you that every player out there will look at the badge on the left-hand side of their chest and they will be playing for their country. It is the time to stand up and to be counted. There's no greater accolade in the sport of rugby league than to represent your country. Gareth Hawk will be looking for a big game. It is important that Britain really get off to a very solid start, lift their confidence, and what a night for this fella. Ashley Klein blows the whistle then, and uh, Sean Long gets us underway, and the ball finds its way to the Australians in a great chase, and it's Luke Goodonnell who will take the first hit of this Tri-Nations meeting between Great Britain and Australia here. Perfect night, really. British night. It's been sunny for a few days this week, very warm, very humid, but today it's a typical British autumn evening, and surely that will favour the Lions. We shall see as Nathan Hindmarsh on his 14th cap, drives the ball forward on tackle number four. Here comes Mark O'Mealy and Peacock and Fielden meeting fire with fire. On the last, here's the kick from Hornby. Under pressure there from Peacock, he delayed and delayed, found its way eventually to Brian Carney. And Britain with first use of the football, and Carney, of course, Australia's winger of the year in the NRL Not this surprising. season. Not surprising, Eddie. The Australian coach, Ricky Stewart, he knows that the winger Brian Carney at times can be a little bit susceptible when they kick deep to him, especially with a high bomb. He can expect plenty of work tonight, and so can this fella, Gareth Rayner. Rayner is tackled by three. Luke O'Donnell was one of them. That was Terry Newton. This now again is Jamie Peacock. And Terry Newton waiting at dummy half for Great Britain. First time they've had the use of the ball. The kicking of long tonight will be so important. That was touched in flight. Eventually it finds its way to Carmichael Hunt. Little hop and a skip, but a great first tackle in Test Match Rugby from Kirk Yeeman. Eddie, Great Britain learned to their cost last week when Brent Webb went 80 metres that you have to be strong on kick returns. When you kick the ball, you need to know that there's a teammate close by side you because the Australians are even better. With their three backfield players, the kicks downfield have to be well guarded. This is Nathan Hindmarsh, he will get to his feet. And this is Lockyer, always the danger man, the world's greatest. And uh, Luke O'Donnell again, his ninth cap in two years for the North Queensland Cowboy. We saw already there Darren Lockyer running the angle, he's taking himself into first receiver, but that's a kick from Hornby. It's a good one too. But it runs, touch in goal. Gareth Rayner was content to allow that to skip away. And Stephen, we walked on this pitch about an hour or two before the game started. It is very, very greasy indeed. It certainly is. We've had plenty of rain over the last 24 hours. Robert, no, believe you me, the, we certainly needed it in Sydney. There's a bit of a drought going out. And there's a big hit from Willie Mason. He said he was going to mark him. He said he'd picked out Stuart Fielden. And they're having a good old verbal battle. And they're having more than that now. And Fielden has gone down. He has been flattened by Willie Mason off the ball. And Britain are involved in a punch-up. And it's Peacock. But the first punch was thrown by Willie Mason. And it's on. A lot of people tip this might happen. It is on. And Mason, he absolutely flattened Fielden. It's Test Football Reborn. Some of the old greats, including Cl Cliff Watson, made it quite clear that the Great Britain boys should stand up. The verbals, and that was a good right. And he stood over him, and they went straight into it. And Fielden, he does not know where he is. And on the bench, his one man, Adrian Morley, that must be twitching inside. And maybe that is the reason why Brian Noble, the Great Britain coach, has kept Adrian Morley on the bench because he would have been involved with that, Phil Clark. Well, he would get there, isn't he? There's a big call here now for Ashley Klein. Has he got the guts to send Mason off? Well, it was a clear right hook. We all saw Ready? that. They've seen it on the big Ready? screen as well. And remember, when Adrian Morley was involved 
in the 10th second Michelle. of a test match against Stand Australia not long ago. He should be off. He this was off. Here, who's overreacted to a push by a British player, trying to punch, overreacted. Yeah. Okay, you got that, Willie. Don't take yeah. it into your own hands. It's gone against you. Right. He's coming down, Darren, all right? Well, he's not taking the wall. Well, this is ludicrous. This is just ludicrous. If we are going to allow this in Show rugby it. league football, it is a disgrace. He should be in the stands now. And he, he should be walking. Let's go, really? That's well, a lot of people That's said right. they believe maybe it. this was the go. way for everything to get fired up in the Tri Nations. There's the first touch by Leon Price. He finds Sean O'Loughlin, Sean McRae. Should Willie Mason still be on this field? Well, I've seen plenty of players before sent from the field for throwing a punch, but. You know, it's a brave call. I think more importantly now, what's going to happen after this game? Will he be ruled out for the next match? What will happen now? And I think there needs to be a message sent out from the coaching staff of Australia now to calm him down. Because Willie Mason's the sort of player who could go on with this. How about this from Great Britain? They had a penalty 20 metres from the line. They shun the opportunity to kick for goal. They believe there's a try on here. And this is Leon Price! Loses the ball forward. It's... No try. It was a knock-on, but great build-up there. Good yeah, defence that came through. It had to be the big impact. Head try, head try. Look at the eyes on this guy. Neat step. Mason, he lined him up, hit him right on the ball-carrying arm, dislodged it. Let's go, Taylor. Well, he's in the action, that's for sure, but you're right, Eddie. They've got to calm him down, but Australia come forward. That looked pretty high from Terry Newton. It's on! You know, Great Britain had the numbers on the outside of Austria. They couldn't find the pass play, and Austria do look like a team that have been caged for two weeks just waiting for this game. They've sat up in the end, almost a hotel isolation preparing for this match, and they've come out fired up. This is Carmichael Hunt, and uh, it is Stuart Fielden who is in with the tackle with Keith Senior. And also there was the man who has been all over the back pages this week. That, of course, is Leon Price. This is Sean Berrigan who comes in, it's his 28th birthday today, Cameron Smith was playing for the Australians last time out. Now it's Carmichael Hunt. Carmichael Hunt cannot get through the defence of Great Britain again. And that was Gareth Ellis with the hit. He will play the ball to Jamie Lyon, who finds Hornby. Whoa! A slice kick from Hornby goes behind the players, bouncing all over the shot. But still, Australia keep it alive. Gasney with the dab to the in-goal area. Rayner is after it, and Rayner hoists the ball into the stands, but it's offside. Offside against Australia. Didn't allow it in the 10 metres. Not the best kick from the halfback, Hornby. Did well to keep it alive there. Gasney realised, and you could see they're just in front. No doubt about that Brent Tate just a fraction in front of the kicker. Good work, though, by Gareth Rayner. That'll lift his spirits. Well, the last time Great Britain were on this ground, the Aussie Stadium, was the 12th of July 2002. They lost here 64 points to 10 in a one-off match. They have licked their wounds for four years, and the next 80 minutes or so will tell us whether they have learned and can they cope with international football at this level. Gareth Hock for Great Britain. Well, I think that Australia, and particularly... The second rower, Willie Mason, has done Great Britain a huge favour. OK, I feel that Mason should have been sent from the field of play, but it has really lifted the forwards of Great Britain. They'll take it to them, don't worry. This is Leon Price again for Great Britain, just inside his own half of the field. They come down the right-hand channel and O'Loughlin with the kick all along the deck, looking for Brian Carney's pace. Carmichael Hunt is there, and he's hounded down by Newton and Keith Senior. Great composure there by Britain. The referee, Ashley Klein, was shouting to give them the full ten. They just held back sufficient enough for him to take a few steps forward. That's Greg Inglis, who plays the ball. This is Berrigan again. He finds Jamie Lyon. And the majority, every one of these players, indeed, in the British side, will know exactly what Jamie Lyon is capable of. Good movement from Australia. Lockyer, the key man for them. Halted, though, by Sean O'Loughlin. Berrigan in at dummy half again. Gets the ball away to Willie Mason. Peacock with the tackle low down. Fielding was over the top. Here is Hornby again. There's the kick right between Carney 
and Wellens deep in goal area here, but the ball will skip its way over the dead ball line. You know, Eddie, I don't think the Great Britain side could start any better than last week against New Zealand. I don't think that was their problem. They, their first 20 minutes last week was sensational. They've certainly started very well here in the first nine minutes of the game. Where they fell away last week was after the 20-minute mark. They went from something like a 95% completion rate down to a 68% completion rate. That's something I'm sure that Brian Noble and his coaching staff would have worked on this week. Talked about the transition phases, talked about finishing their sets of six well and not giving penalties away to the Australian side. They've been impressive here tonight so far. They look, they look a much more confident side. They look comfortable with their game plan and they are testing the Australian defence, particularly just on the edges there. And they've just won their fourth penalty. Australia have had one. And they will restart on the halfway line, and this is Sean O'Loughlin. And that penalty came about from the player being a lot more enthusiastic at trying to get to his feet. Against uh, New Zealand last weekend, I just got the impression they were very slow. Maybe they were a little bit slow out of the blocks. They haven't played together for such a long time, Great Britain. Terry Newton from dummy half finds Sean Long. Here is Fielden. Ferocious challenge on Fielden again. This time, though, it was Marco Mealy leading the charge, and Fielden is a little groggy. Long will dab it over the team, is hit late by Mason. Was he ever? The touch is not. He was taken out by Mason, and Sean Long is another British player in Cloud Cuckoo Land, courtesy of Willie Mason. He has split the right eyebrow. Now, the touch judge has not come on. But it looked very late to me. Dip over, and that is, he's got a goal now. This is the second. I mean, Tolton Slather, why don't they all give him a gun each? It was a raised left elbow. Yeah, got you. Just completely took him out. Well, there's been comments made in the press this week that if the authorities don't watch this, and look at the blood on the, the head of Sean Long, if the authorities don't watch this, some. Observers um, believe that this could be the start of all-out war. But it's, it's a deliberate elbow, as far as I can see. Yeah. It Have certainly looks worse right? from another angle. At the very least, if you play the rules from Super League, it's a simming in because okay. he's attacked the player late. He's, he's he makes no attempt to put the hands right towards the ball. We're going to start with the penalty. Well, right, come on, mate. <laughs> and look at Mason and Peacock continuing the discussion on. Well, you can pump someone in the face and you can raise an elbow and split an eyebrow, you stay on the field. Well, third time lucky, eh? Look at that. Right. You know, if I, if I was coach Ricky Stewart, I'd get him off the field now. Okay. So I think he's now a liability. Get him off and get someone oh. else on there. That was just absolutely right. disgraceful. Let's make it loop two feet. Well, the more you look at it, the worse it becomes. Long continues on. Here is a Lachlan. Hornby and... Uh, Lyon, the tacklers, this is Fielden. He's battling on Stuart Fielden. He's obviously feeling the effect of the right hook early. Terry Newton, 10 metres away, gets the ball to Gareth Ellis. Ellis will pump the legs forward, spins but can't get it away. Sheer weight of numbers, four tackles gone. This is Newton, back it comes to Long. Long gives it to Leon Price. Price fires it wide to Wellens. Not Wellens. the best. Well, well done, Gareth Rayner, for keeping that ball in the field of play. He is Wellens again, gets the pass back to Long. Long will hoist the kick. Carney's hunting this, Inglis is underneath it. Inglis gets it, but well done, Keith Senior, and he now concedes the penalty. You know, passing accuracy out wide has let Great Britain down previously in test matches, and again, an opportunity to score. Wellens couldn't find a fast an accurate pass to Gareth Rayner when he had an opportunity. Rayner had to duck down and you saw the Australian defenders were scrambling back. It would have been a touch and go whether Rayner had got in the corner, but we need better at passing accuracy if we want to take those chances. The possession stat says Great Britain 60%, Australia 40 but again so far, Britain, Sean, have not got points on the ball. Well, they haven't, and this is where they've got to convert their field position and their territory into points. Again, I go back to last week, something they didn't really do against the New Zealand side. Just notice as well how Ball many... Pass. That's uncharacteristic from an Australian side, isn't it? Well, it is a ploy that they use all the time. And Ricky Stewart, their coach, and little doubt in my mind, it was just delayed enough from Sean Berrigan. Marco O'Mealy taking it very flat indeed. But 
I'm with you guys. We really need to stretch and get some points on the board. Maybe even kick early in the tackle count. This Try is... to just catch Australia out. This is Sean O'Loughlin in possession for Great Britain. He plays the ball to Terry Newton. And Newton looks for the runner. The runner arrives. It's Wellens. He goes under the challenge of two defenders. Lyon was one. This is Newton. He finds Peacock. Important set of six this is for... Great Britain right oh, now, they're inside the danger zone, it's with Sean Long, and Long fires the pass back to Leon Price, Price will take the one up the middle, gets the offload to Long, Long then finds O'Loughlin, O'Loughlin gives it to Gareth Ellis, and as Ellis goes up the middle, can't get the ball away, tackled by Luke O'Donnell, it's Newton, the dummy half, he finds O'Loughlin, O'Loughlin then to Stuart Fielden, again Willie Mason, and Nathan Hindmarsh, hunting Stuart Fielden, that's the last, Britain are 11 metres short of the line, Newton fires the pass, and good defence this time, solid defence from Australia, down to Bill on the side, injury news Bill. It's not surprising that given the attack on him by Willie Mason, Sean Long is bearing the scars, he's got a cut to his eyebrow, he's out there still, I don't know whether they're going to have to bring him off shortly for treatment, whether Ashley Klein will ask for him to be treated, but it's hardly surprising, given the nature of that challenge on him, that he's got that cut. Indeed so, it's a question of whether Ashley Klein notices whether the blood is coming from the eyebrow of... Uh, Sean Long, and I think I've just spotted number 15 emerging off the bench. Adrian Morley is about to join the party. This is Luke O'Donnell. Well, Great Britain's coach Brian Noble has held Adrian Morley back for 14 minutes. And in the heat of the exchanges, it's probably a good job. Deep kick downfield, easy for Paul Wellens. Wellens will run this ball back. Pretty good composure well from Great Britain. There's the man that everybody will be hating over in England, Willie Mason. Really should have been off the field of play, not just once, but with two incidents. And here he comes. He'll pinpoint him. Don't worry. So will the green and gold. They'll try to get him all riled up. He's a fiery cutter. Listen to the booze. He enters the fray, Adrian Morley, and he's replaced Stuart Fielden. This is Kirk Yeeman. On his debut, three England caps previously for the Hull centre. And uh, Leon Price with the kick that bounces off the knees of Carmichael Hunt. Good tactics, though. Kicking early, kicking on the fourth. Oh, great work. Fantastic great chase. stuff. Great yeah. chase from Gareth Hock. Here now is uh, Brent Tate. Went for a grab, did Morley. And that was Berrigan. Here is Mason. Wonderful low tackle from Sean Long. Oh, a penalty given against Long. There's a little push as Mason got to his feet. One area in uh, Australia's game they won't be happy about is their kicking game. Great Britain far superior so far tonight. Ben Hornby, I can remember three kicks. Two have gone dead and one's hit Paul Wellens on the, on the full. So they've been able to come out to at least the 20 or 30 metre line on their first tackle. That's something Australia won't be happy about and I'm sure the message has got out already. Well, I reckon the Ricketts here will get the message out to say, hey, come on. Darren Lockyer take control of that department. Lockyer has been taking the first receiver, he's been controlling things out there. But the British defence, just on the play of the ball area, see how they're coming out quickly. They're trying to force Australia down one, one narrow path. 16 minutes gone of Tri Nations game number four, and Great Britain and Australia toe to toe, slugging it out, literally. And this is Berrigan for the Australians. They're in. The danger zone here with Nathan Hindmarsh, Morley and Ellis combined to bring him down. Tackle number three. He plays it to Berrigan. Berrigan will scamper forward. Now then, this is the first real test of the British defence. Hornby the dummy half, Lockyer the danger man, Lockyer the fluid runner, fires the short ball. They lose it in the tackle. A wonderful hit. Gareth Hock, I think it was. It certainly was. Tremendous hit. Beautiful delayed pass from the skipper Darren Lockyer. But that young fella picked him right out. Bang! Come on a short run. Good impact. Got right underneath the ball carrying arm. Gareth Hock began last week on the bench, his first start here tonight. He impressed as a sub against New Zealand last week. That was his debut. And that was a fierce challenge on Willie Mason. Legal. 17 minutes gone. Keith Senior will play the ball to uh, Paul Wellens. 
Interesting to see when Morley will just wind himself up for the first carry. Here he comes. Oof. Petro Sivanasiva was in there quickly, so too was Anthony Tupo. Here is Terry Newton on the run for Great Britain. He finds Sean O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin, oh, he got the ball backwards to Newton, and he finds Keith Senior. Senior will run laterally, can't get away from Sivanasiva. He plays the ball to Terry Newton, though. This now is Gareth Hock once again. Hands off Nathan Hindmarsh once, can't get away from him second time with Tupo and Berrigan, he's brought to ground. Still inside their own half, Great Britain on tackle number five. Here is Sean Long. And Long with the kick, but uh, straight into the arms of Greg Inglis. This is Australia's latest superstar. Hit by O'Loughlin first, delayed him, Carney and co in there to finish him off. It was Gareth Ellis. He'll get to his feet, plays the ball to Hornby. Here is Jamie Lyon. And another change from Australia. On comes Brent Kite. But it's all going fairly well for Great Britain at the moment, but just like last week, no tries posted. As the ball is fed out down the right-hand side to Gaznia, who was on his knees and receiving treatment earlier. Petro Sivanasiva on his way to the dressing room. This is Lockyer, Lockyer infield to Kite, good movement here is Luke O'Donnell, Luke O'Donnell taking them on, the ball though spills forward, and Carmichael hung, tackled by his opposite number, Paul Wellens, Britain breathe a sigh of relief. Well, as well as the loss of Petro Sivnesiva, I think Mark Gazner's going to leave the field. He tried to take on Sean Long on a previous run, Long held him up, and that's a big boost really for Great Britain, because Gaznia is probably individually the most dangerous player in the Australian side. Fielder coming back on, there's the offload, you see it already went forward, good skills by Hunt to take the pass, the referee helped Great Britain out, it's Mark Gaznia who needs some help at the moment. And Phil, what you'll probably find here now is that Jamie Lyon may well go across, Sean Berrigan might come out of the pack and go to the centre, where he's certainly... Uh, accustomed to and you might find that Cameron Smith goes on and plays a hooker so they lose a very valuable player in uh, in Mark Asnia but they've certainly got adequate replacements and adequate versatility within their side the one thing that Great Britain have to watch out for we saw on that occasion that the skipper from Australia Darren Lockie was running the angle they gave him a lot of room to move you can't afford to do that and he brought the loose forward Luke O'Donnell back on the inside it took good defense to stop him here now is Adrian Morley again for Great Britain, wrestled to the ground by Cameron Smith. And there's been a little uh, change in number as well, by the way, for Australia. Brent Kite was 15, Anthony Tupu was 16, despite the fact that they were named in the jerseys the other way round. Forward pass. Forward pass against Great Britain here. Well, we saw the Australians do it earlier, and it really is a, a bad mistake. It is all about keeping that composure. Again, we've seen some wonderful work in the opening 20 minutes from the hooker, Terry Newton. He really was superb in the same 20 minutes against New Zealand, Phil. You know, the former kangaroo, Brian Fletcher, who now plays in the Super League with the Wigan Warriors, says that basically in Super League, for the first 20 minutes, it's exactly the same as games down under, after which point British sides drop off back home. We'll see now whether this international side can match it with the Kangaroos for the second 20. Well, there's a mistake by uh, Brent Tate. The ball was dipping in front of him by Lockyer, and uh, oh, referee, right. Mr Klein says it's a knock-on. It's disputed by Brent Tate and well, by Jamie Lyon. Well, he's not just going to accept it, but you'll see here that it jostles and bounces. Gets to it second time, but you only need one. Wellens for Great Britain then on the halfway line. 21 and a half minutes gone, still we await the first points of this Gillette Tri-Nations match number four. As Carney drives it forward and Great Britain have another penalty. Stick That's it into the, the corner, don't worry about the two. Keep the momentum going. They've given it to Long, he's going to put it in the corner. They fully charge Great Britain. And as the minutes are ticking away, there's a little bit of doubt being built up in the minds of the Australians. It really has been all of Great Britain. There have only been a couple of sorties on their own line. You've got to remember, Eddie, games against Australia are important in the 75th to the 80th minute. Not exactly right now. We've learnt that to our cost in the past with the Great Britain side. They go for 80 minutes, these games. The man who prefers Blackpool Beach to Bondi Beach, Leon Price, plays the ball to Terry Newton. Here is Adrian Morley. Determined that this isn't going to be his last appearance in Sydney. 
joins the Warrington Wolves next year, Morley. Newton fires the pass, this is Gareth Hock. Lockyer's after him. And Lyon does well, covering up. Oh, there's a knock on there, though, by Kirk Yeeman. Really didn't need to get that offload going. Just trying to force the pass, and now we're just going to see a, a copy of what happened in Christchurch, where, after such a wonderful start, we just seem to panic, throw the ball around, wasn't expecting it was the debut centre, Kirk Yeeman. I think what we're seeing, Steve, is both sides trying to play dry weather football in, in quite slippery conditions. We've had a little bit of rain here just before the game and some rain as the game has progressed. progressed. And I think that, that both sides are probably finding out that it's a little more slippery underfoot. And therefore, once that ball touches the ground a few times, it's not as easy to play lateral as you think. I'll just get another little report on my positional play because I was way off base with the Australian team. They've actually moved Ben Hornby to fullback. It looks like Greg Inglis has gone to the centre with Carmichael Hunt onto the wing. And I would say that Cameron Smith is actually playing halfback for the Australian team. Here is Willie Mason. And Britain hunt him down. Senior was first in and Fielden was coming in at number three. And they're still carrying on the conversation, those two. That was a bit high from Newton on the uh, substitute Cameron Smith. That was a bit more than high. Definitely got away with it. But again, that doubt, that's a good kick. It is a good kick because Wellens has to run it out of his owning goal area. And Wellens does so. The Man of Steel, the Players' Player of the Year, the Rugby League Writers' Player of the Year, won well, just about everything, including the Man of the Match in the Grand Final. The only thing he missed out on this year was the Lance Todd Trophy in the Challenge Cup Final. But uh, St Helens' teammate James Roby is waiting to come on. So impressive on his debut last week. And uh, that, I think, is Mark Gasnier. It certainly is. It's a bad hip injury. He was wincing when he was trying to lift the shoulder. And it was certainly interfering with the rib cage and the, Great the from hip. Hawk. That's the last tackle, though. Good defence here from Australia. The kick from Sean Long will have to be good. He's gone for a big boomer. And it's uh, easily into the arms of uh, the half-back come full-back Ben Hornby. I'm surprised, you know, that, that they have not sent the message out to Sean Long. We've mentioned the fact that it's slippy. Get the ball on the ground. There's an opportunity that, you know, sometimes they just forget and don't use the foot to stop the momentum of the football. And I'm not so sure we should keep at this, this high bomb down the throat. A couple of tackles missed then on Luke O'Donnell. He's fought back from two knee reconstructions. This fellow to uh, be back in the test arena. There is a mistake again. Great Britain needed that, Eddie. They were looking a little flat. Australia just getting the ascendancy in the match. Their chases were going down far quicker and with a greater energy than uh, the Great Britain ones at the end of the set. Both teams looking for a mistake. Great Britain, I suppose, now could do with a substitute coming on and making a big impact. Well, he just had a little look, didn't he, Cameron Smith? Uh, it's been pretty rough out there, rough and tough. Roby is waiting to be given the nod by Brian Noble to get on. It's a good move as well by the GB coach. He's very, feet. he's very quick off the play the ball area. This is Kirk Yeeman. Oh, got the ball away to Keith Senior. And Senior steps out of the challenges. Important jo job that Mason was there. Stops the British momentum. Carney to Newton. And here again comes Gareth Ellis. Well, that's a great first run, isn't it, on the opening tackle by Great Britain. Keith Senior stepping out of the challenges. Here come Britain down the left-hand side now with Gareth Hock taking on... Uh, Jamie Lyon, Darren Lockyer. O'Loughlin at dummy half. The ball comes in field to Stuart Fielden. Could be excused for looking out of the corner of his eye every time he receives the ball. Fielden for the figure of Willie Mason. There is Roby. Off the deck he finds Long. Long dabs it to the in goal area. And Hornby taking no chances. Just uh, slaps the ball over the dead ball line. There are major problems for the Australians and Mark Gasnier. There's more than that. This is the mistake from Cameron Smith, which put us in a pretty good position, and it was a beautifully weighted kick from Sean Long. Little halfback Ben Hornby was uh, taking the position at full back. Well, they're doing everything right, Steve. Oh, they're building pressure. They've got a repeat set. They've had time and time now attacking the Austrian side, and they are only human. Eventually, they'll make mistakes in the defensive decisions, and Great Britain will get an opportunity. Wonderful set of six, especially now with Roby on the field. Well, there's a lot of composure shown there. 
not the best trap, but they've got away with it. Yes, it's picked up by Gareth Reyna. Oh, that was high. High around the chin of Reyna by Hindmarsh. You play the ball, though, to Roby. Here is Morley. Whoa, Mason went for him again. It's with Roby again. Good scampering run from dummy half. It's That's where he's good. That's where he's good. Quick play the ball. Get him away. Sean Long, and he finds Leon Price. Leon Price back to Keith Senior. Good on his feet, Keith Senior. Needed a good tackle, and it was from the substitute Brent Kite. On the charge is Wellens. So close. Great Britain referee signifying this is the last tackle. And here is Long. Oh, interception! Hornby! Hornby has got English with him. And Greg Inglis, history repeats itself. A length of the field try last week in Christchurch. A length of the field try here in Sydney for Australia. And all that pressure has come to naught. And Greg Inglis fed by Hornby. And Australia take the first try of the match. One of the most versatile players, Ben Hornby, who set up Greg Inglis. I said he's the latest superstar from Australia and he has scored 25 tries for Melbourne this year in just 32 matches. More importantly, in the context of the Tri-Nations, he's nudged the kangaroos ahead. The one thing you've got to say about the Australians, they are confident when they want to take a gamble. And it was a huge gamble. It could have been a try at the other end, but he put himself in a tremendous position. And that is the difference at times at international level, especially between the two foes of Great Britain and Australia, is that at times when it looks as though you're in full control, they will do something completely out of the box. They didn't bother about going for the defensive ploy. They went in into attack. They're trying to get Gaznia back on the field if they can but the try converted by Darren Rock here Australia ahead by six points to nil you know it's just like the try that Matt Cooper scored at the JJB Stadium two years ago great Britain pressing for most of the first half and the Australians with the ability to seize the opportunity and the speed to go the length of the field nobody was going to catch Greg Inglis that's six points to Australia but Great Britain need to keep their heads high because they played well in this game that's the first mistake they've made They'll know that territorially they've had the better of this game. They'll know that on that repeat set, they probably should have converted in the points. But you don't be put off by somebody that, that takes an intercept pass. Those things can happen. Ben Hornby made a decision. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you don't. The ball could so easily have sailed past his face and Great Britain score the try. So I, I remember saying the same thing last week when New Zealand scored. What you've got to do is not go away from what you've been doing well. Yes, don't panic. That is the one thing that did occur in the final. 10 minutes in Christchurch last week. We just got a shot there, Steve, over Brian Carney on the bench. And I noticed he gave up the chase uh, on uh, Greg English and he was limping. Well, it's the hamstring that he su suffered with in last year's Tri Nations. He uh, seems to have problems, doesn't he, with the right hamstring. Chris Brooks, the British doctor, icing the area as the kick comes down the line. That's a great kick. Oh, that's a fantastic kick. Well, another Brian Carney is off the field of play. They kicked early in the piece. It is tremendous rugby league when you've got to think on your feet as well. Patchwork for the big centre, Mark Gaznia. Who Problems. Will, who will now operate on the wing for Great Britain? Will it be Keith Senior who will move out there? I, I think they'll have to. Lee Gilmore has been playing in that position. Well, Senior is out there already. He's uh, played on the wing. A few times for Great Britain in the past, he's, uh, he's lining up in that position now as uh, Britain try and work the ball away from the base of the scrum. But uh, there's a bit of a problem for Britain with the fact that Carney is off the field and that hamstring is being iced. Well, the one good thing about it is that Brian Noble opted for, rather than a very strong, rugged bench, he went for speed. And the mere fact that Wilkin can run and also Gilmore... Hawk has lost it. Oh, big error. Tate has it back for Australia. Here is Hindmarsh. Well, 32 minutes or thereabouts on the clock as Hindmarsh plays the ball. And here now is uh, Brent Kite again. Making his test debut against the Kiwis last month. This is his third cap for the Kangaroos. And now it's with Hornby. He finds Lockyer. Lockyer gives the ball to Carmichael Hunt. Hunt over the top. 
to uh, Sean Berrigan. Britain having to muscle up in defence. Tackle number four, 11 metres away from the line. Hunt gives it to Lockyer. Lockyer, it's the now with Hornby. Hornby tries to turn around Gareth Rayner. Oof. And oh, Rayner collides with the cameraman. And Rayner's come off worst. And the cameraman's on his feet. And he'll take a photograph for the case. Well, I'm not so sure the cameraman should be so close to that corner. No, it's a bit dangerous, isn't it? Well, something will have to be done about that. They should not be so close and in the corner into a test arena like that. And I wonder whether Brian Noble and the Great Britain boys are aware that Australia have only scored nine tries so far in the Tri Nations this year. Two of them have been in the five minutes before half time, and three of them of the five minutes before the end of the second half. In the five minute period before both breaks, they are ruthlessly dangerous. Can it be Great Britain here? Sean Long on the burst, and it was an important tackle that was by Sean Berrigan. Here goes James Roby now, carrying the battle forward, just as he did in Christchurch last week. He will play the ball to Wellens. Wellens will find a Lachlan. Up goes the kick into the corner. And Gilmore was after it, but the uh, referee says it's a first knock on. It's on the last tackle. The knock on by Lee Gilmore. It's the turnover, 10 metres from the Australian line. A hint may be of obstruction there against Lee Gilmore, perhaps. But anyway, the referee saw his other words. Oh, Morley went hunting there. Through the shoulder, legally. It's Sivanasiva for Australia. Petro Sivanasiva, the 12th time that he has faced Great Britain in the test arena. Now it's with Nathan Hindmarsh. Three, this is where Great Britain got to be really on their toes. Make it, make it. Australia deep in within their own half, but they're capable of doing anything. Lucky with the ball inside, James finds James Jamie Lyon. He's grounded on the halfway line. Here goes the winger, Brent Tate, again. And uh, he's taken out there. Obstruction. Little doubt in the mind of the whistleblower, Ashley Klein. Uh, Michael Hunt. I've got another player worth having a little look at here. Uh, oh, that, that's an obvious obstruction. And, you know, wingers, they have a habit of going across field, don't they, sometimes, instead of just picking a hole and running. Just keep an eye on Sean Long for a little while. He's been holding his back out there for about the last five minutes. I don't know if he's 100% either. Well, here's a chance for John Wilkin to make a big impact on the Test Arena. He's had a sensational fourth year at St Helens. He's about to come on for his Test debut. As we approach the 35-minute uh, mark of this... Tri Nations game at the Aussie Stadium in Sydney. The Australians ahead by six points to nil, and Roby for Great Britain. And he finds Stuart Field, who has been in the thick of the battle from the very first minute. And the very first right hook he took from Willie Mason. It is with Long now. And Long has found the gap. And Long attacks them. Ball comes in field. And Wellens will score for Britain. Wellens scores for Great Britain at St Helens. One, two. Long made the get the break and Wellens was the man in support and Australia had nothing in defence to stop Paul Wellens and he comes up with his second try of this Tri Nations 2006 down under here he got his first in five years last week just like St Helens Corporation buses they come along in pairs Britain about to go level tremendous work by Sean Long Skirted out just off the play the ball area. Threw the dummy back on the inside. Darren Lockyer and Luke O'Donnell took the dummy superbly. And Paul Wellens has put Great Britain back into this game. And boy, is he happy. You know, his body language was good from the moment they won the penalty. He was clapping, cajoling plays into place. Second play, good speed. This try and goal might only be worth six points on the scoreboard, but I think it'll be worth double that in the minds of the Great Britain players, because psychologically, it was exactly the lift they needed at exactly the right time. Paul Wellens with the try, and the bloodied face of Sean Long to try and make it a dozen goals in the red, white and blue jersey of Great Britain for him personally. But more importantly, in the context of this match, six all. Six all it is. And I'm reminded when Great Britain were last here four years ago in, 19, in 2002, they trailed at half-time 
34 points to nil. Beautiful body swerve with the dummy. Kept the composure, as always. One of the finest fullbacks in the world, Paul Wellens, knew exactly where to position himself for the halfback, Sean Long, to pick him out. Game on. Here's the try scorer, Paul Wellens. Clattered to the ground by Luke O'Donnell. Now, Gareth Rayner for Great Britain. And Ricky Stewart knows that this is not going to be an easy night at the office. The important thing is that Great Britain are level with two minutes to go to half-time. Long the engineer, Wellens the scorer. This is Lee Gilmore now. Well, we're talking about not taking the sucker punch. Great Britain, that is, and it turned around the other way. Very rare you'll find that Darren Lockyer... Oh, that's a poor kick. It is not the best from Roby. Straight into the arms of Carmichael Hunt. Roby, though, with a flying tackle. Wilkin was there as well to add reinforcements. On for Gareth Hock. That's Brent Tate. Great tackle by Long. Lyon at dummy half. It's Lockyer. Just flicks the ball back to Nathan Heinmark. Here is Lyon again. Ball goes wide to Brent Tate. And Brent Tate nearly through, but Great Britain muscle up in defence, some 40 metres from their own line. Superb work by the centre, Jamie Lyon. We've seen it up for the last two seasons in England. Here's O'Donnell again. This time Great Britain muscling up in defence. Down goes the loose forward, Willie Mason. Well, he has uh, played a big part in this match already, hasn't he? Maybe for not all the right reasons. The ball, a short pass, and stepping out of the tackles, but uh, it was... Lockyer, who got on the end of the pass from Cooper. They're not done yet, the Australians, though, Carmichael Hunt. And no chances taken by Gilmore. They'll get a repeat set of six right on the stroke of half-time. Poor option taken by the Australian side then. They went the short side and stayed left. Great Britain had plenty of numbers. Had Australia gone to their right, Great Britain was short, just past the posts on the other side of the field. One thing I can report on, though, Sean Long's back is now OK. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was just kidding the Australians, but it just shows you with that last attack by the Green and Golds. They're capable of coming back. This is an important phase of the game, and Brian Noble knows it as well. We've got uh, 40 seconds and counting to the half-time siren. And Australia will have at least three more tackles, you think, as Sivan Asiva drives it in again. Great Britain will be desperate to get to the half-time siren level here is Berrigan, he fires the pass to Lockyer, and Lockyer will go wide and one tackle is missed, the ball goes down, and here's Carmichael Hunt, oh, basketball style, brilliant from Cameron Smith now, and Cameron Smith is inching his way towards the line, and Britain just survived, there's the half-time siren, and Britain will get to the break level, Britain will get to the break level, despite the fact that Lockyer pops over a one pointer, the referee had blown the whistle, and Wellens' try, converted by Long, gives Great Britain the fillip of a level playing field at half time. They have their problems. They've got Carney off, we believe, with an ankle injury. But Paul Wellens' try, converted by Sean Long after English went the length of the field and scored the try, but was converted by Darren Lockyer. Well, six all in the test match. Four years ago when Britain were here in the one-off match, it was 34-0. Not so tonight. Saturday we're across the Tasman and it is the reverse fixture against New Zealand. We're in Wellington, 6.30 in the morning on Sky Sports 2 
And after the events in the uh, judiciary this week, Brian Noble has said, well, that one will be tiddlywinks. And it is going to be a terrific contest. And talking of judiciary in Australia, there's a fellow who knows all about it, Adrian Morley. But he has uh, held his temper. Great Britain have held their nerve. And at half time, it is six apiece here at the Aussie Stadium. Australia six, Great Britain six. And during the uh, course of this first half, privately here in the commentary box, uh, we have been saying what wonderful skill, what great entertainment we have seen, and what bravery is on show here tonight from the players, particularly of Great Britain. It's all about international level, and that has been on show, as you say, in the first 40. There's the Batman of the piece, Willie Mason. He'll get a huge cheer as he enters into the stadium, onto the playing paddock. But they know, the green and golds, that Great Britain will not lie down. They were looking pretty cocky when Hornby took the intercept and offloaded to Inglis, who had all the pace in the world to set the Australians flying. The skipper, Darren Lockyer, at times has been strong. A lot depends on this fella as well. The man that you just saw on your screen, Adrian Morley. And what a second game for this bloke. James Roby, it is going to be very, very interesting. The opening 10, 15 minutes, perhaps, Great Britain can keep that composure. They need to. And the kickoff is out on the full, surely. Was there a foot in touch then by Roby, or foot at least on the line, when he uh, by uh, Wilkin, rather, when he collected that kickoff? that was sailing out on the fall. Anyway, the British players continue on and Leon Price operating with no number on his back in the second half, exactly as Danny Maguire did last week. And we thought there was damage to the number six jersey. Apparently, it is very, very tight. And uh, it made difficult breathing for Danny Maguire just seven days ago. That's why he changed. And it looks like we've only got a couple of jerseys with the number six on. But the one that is being worn by Leon Price in the second half presumably is the right size and Long gets a stray arm from Nathan Hindmarsh. That's a great start to the second half for Great Britain. They've moved the ball around, they've caused some trouble for Australia and then some good play between Roby and Long as wrong-footed Nathan Hindmarsh. There's nothing malicious with that challenge, he's just caught off balance and as a result throws his arm out instinctively and gives away a penalty, penalty on the fourth tackle. Great Britain have gone from one end of the field to the other inside the first minute. So what an opportunity here at the start of this second half as Gareth Ellis will drive it in again for Great Britain. He gets to within 11 metres of the Australian try line. Roby is the man who's waiting at dummy half. He'll have a little scamper, he'll find Long. And Long brings Leon Price into it. He finds Kirk Yeeman and Yeeman tries to go up past a couple. And Lyon was there and so too was Cameron Smith. He's pulled down. There is Leon Price, here is Long. Flat pass, Morley is clattered to the ground by Mark O'Mealy. We'll play the ball to Roby. Roby finds Peacock, and Peacock's over, isn't he? Jamie Peacock, this will be handed up to the video referee. Have Great Britain scored at the start of his second half? The captain believes he has. Fully deserved as well. Quick play the ball, they went far too high on the big fella. He dives down into the corner. Does he get it down? That's try time, that'll be T.R.Y. and it will silence the majority of the crowd here at the Aussie Stadium. It is fully deserved, he loses control but gets hold of it just at the right moment. There's fingertips on that, and boys and girls, that is T.R.Y. Well, the video what referee a time! The video referee didn't agree with you last week, Steve, on the Danny Maguire one. Will this one go in Great Britain's favour? I'm not so sure, because as you say, he does lose possession does he regain control of the ball before it touches the ground? That's probably not the best angle to see it from. Well, that might be the one that gives it away. I don't think so. He loses it here and then gets hold of it. That's try time. That's not the whitewash that you see from the other angle. That's from the advertising. Well, they're not convinced, the video referee. The one thing you need in sport, Eddie, is luck at this level. These two that... teams are evenly balanced. They need some luck this way. He loses it there, but I think he gets control again. Gets a fingertip. That's all you need. Doesn't have to be four-ton pressure. 
Well, in Super League, that would probably be a try, benefit of the doubt. And I know they use benefit of the doubt in this country very, very regular indeed. Jamie Peacock, it will be his first try in four years if it's given. The decision is pending. We wait. Everyone holds their breath. And the try is given on benefit of the doubt. And Great Britain hit the front at the start of this second half. Tremendous work. That was no fluke. Quick play the ball from the kickoff. They worked the way up 75 metres downfield. They caught Australia cold. They went far too high on the British captain. And he has come up with a sensational try. And they are stunned. Not only the crowd, but also the 13 in green and gold that are behind the goal line. Long as the extras, and Great Britain are ahead by 12 points to six. Well, the experts down under have predicted all week that Australia would go wide when they had the ball, and their skill and speed would take them around this Great Britain side. Great Britain have chosen a different option, route one, straight down the middle, and Australia weren't able to handle the determination that Peacock came on this ball. There was plenty of traffic to get through, but he knew he had to get over that try line. Great Britain are the only team ever to beat Australia on this ground. It was a famous night in 1988. The ashes were gone, but Great Britain, with the likes of Mike Gregory, Phil Ford, Henderson Gill, Martin Fire in the side, they came out and they won the Test match. Well, can they win this one? Let us not count our chickens just yet. Down to the sideline, Bill Arthur has got Danny Maguire with him. Danny, dream start to the second half. Yeah, it's an absolute perfect start. Uh, it's what Brian talked about, um, in, you know, in the dressing rooms, um, go out and have a big start to the game, and um, the lads have really done that, and they've got to stick in there. It's going to be very tough this second half, but you know, we're very confident that we can do it. Yes, the feeling in there must have been that this is winnable. Without a doubt, uh, you know, all the boys are really together, and... Um, as they've shown there, they've come out and had a great start to the second half, and it's very winnable. We've just got to hang in there because, as you know, Australia play for the full eight, so that's what we'll have to do. Thanks, Danny. Cheers. Yeah, that is uh, a lesson hopefully that Britain have learned as Nathan Hindmarsh takes his place on the bench. They have to play for 80 minutes against this lot. Well, it's been an exceptional start, hasn't it, to the second half? And in fact, this is Australia's first set of six in something like five minutes. So Great Britain have had the ascendancy and they've taken a lot of juice out of the Australian side defensively in that first half. And I felt that Australia probably um, had only used, I think they'd only used four interchanges before half time. That may prove significant. One thing's for sure, you get a feeling Australia has more points in them. And I think Great Britain are going to have to score more points again in this half. That was great work again in defence by Paul Wellens. He ducked underneath the chasers there and got the ball the right side of the whitewash on his goal line. Oh, and he was picked up and forced back was Lee, uh, John Wilkin, but he managed to get the ball away to Roby. And that's tackle number four. This is a big set of six defensively for the Kangaroos. This is Gilmore, and he'll take the responsibility himself. 30 metres from their own line, Britain find themselves on the last tackle. Roby will surely find Long, and Long will just hump the ball downfield, and he finds the ground. That's a great kick. English will pick it up behind his own goal line. The chase arrives eventually. O'Loughlin and Senior and Ellis leading the way. Down goes Greg Inglis. Tremendous kick, wasn't it, from Sean Long? The three previous were not good. They were right down the throat of the Australians. But he's got his level now. We've got to make sure that the defence is pretty solid. We're moving up very quick out wide again. Tent gets the ball away, Tate finds Lockyer. Lockyer is on his own, Wellens is ahead of him. The kick to the corner, they're looking for Lyon, they find touch. It was inventive from Lockyer, and Jamie Lyon was just not quick enough. It was great play too from Gareth Redder. The communication between him and Wellens alerted to the danger really. He, he, uh, made sure that Wellens took Lockyer and he knew that he had line to take curve over his right shoulder. As soon as the kick went in, Rayner went for the corner, forked it from the Lions, it just went out of play. Just shows you the ability though of the Australians to no way, no way. hit back with a break from deep within. That is the one thing we've got to keep an eye on. They don't wait, 
like a lot of other sides to get into the red attacking zone they have the quality and the confidence to offload way downfield Roby and Roby gives it to Gareth Ellis let's get some news on Brian Carney the winger off in the first half ice on the hamstring Bill and it doesn't sound like uh, good news, Eddie. It's a recurrence of Brian Carney's uh, long-running problem. It's a hamstring injury for Carney. The word from the Great Britain bench and from uh, Professor Chris Brooks, the team doctor, is that Brian Carney will not be coming back out tonight. Now, whether, in fact, he'll be uh, involved again in this Tri-Nations tournament is probably open to question because he does have a history of hamstring problems. So, uh, certainly, his job is done for tonight. Australia get the ball out wide, that's wonderful defence from uh, Lee Gilmore out on that wing. And here come the Australians again, this time in the shape of Anthony Tupo. He's grounded on the halfway line. Next weekend, New Zealand awaits Great Britain. And the following week, it's the return against the Aussies. And then we're back here at the Aussie Stadium for the final of the Tri-Nations in 2006. Just making the point that the Australians, they've up the tempo as well, they know they have to. Lyon is pulled down by Sean Long, teammates in 2006, opposite side of the fence tonight. Lockyer again, good challenge, he still gets the ball away though, and here now is Ben Hornby, he saw a little gap, oh Lachlan and Gareth Ellis filled it, last tackle here for the Australians, it's with Lockyer, Lockyer dabs the ball to the in-goal area, and Leon Price just shuttles it dead, it's a repeat set of six though for the Aussies. Again, a lot of pressure from the green and gold, and Leon Price coming to the rescue yet again, they, they realise and it's also indicative of the fact that the Australians are having to opt for the kick into the corner all the time. They know that they're finding it difficult to get through this very solid, tight Great Britain defence. You get the feeling, Steve, don't you, that Australia have just lifted. They've just raised the intensity levels ever so slightly, and it's important now that Great Britain go with them. It's very important they defend well, and they just hang on and hang on, because Australia are hell-bent on building some pressure here. That's Mark O'Mealy with the first drive of this set of six. They're 25 metres away, the Australians, and they go left with Tupo. And Tupo is clattered by Gilmore and by Senior. They've been big in defence, those two tonight. Here is Petro Sivanasiva, Ellis and Senior again. Got to watch for the Australians' second attack. It's with Hornby, and he will fire the ball into the arms of Lockyer. Oh! And Willie Mason puts it down with a try of begging. He knew it was try time, and he knows it. It's a half grin on the face, but it's sheer frustration as far as the rest of the Australian team are con concerned. John Wilkin had gone right out of the line. He'd come in on the angle instead of staying his ground. That's an important facet that Great Britain's defence has to think about. They've got to talk to each other. You don't get excited and just one of you jump out. That's what happened. And we nearly paid a hefty price. Here is Kirk Yeeman. What a torrid debut at test match level for him. I think he's done very well. Even in the early opening minutes of this match, he actually pushed away Mark Gaznia on a one-on-one -on -one tackle. It was only a significant move that he made an extra two or three metres, but really important that he got the better of his opponent. Great Britain are struggling at it to get out of their own end zone at the moment in this first ten minutes of the second half, and they've been helped by Sean Long's kicks. But they maybe, just maybe, Australia have given them everything in that big ten. What a hit here on Roby. But he's up to the challenge, there's no doubt about that. Another good kick from Long. Splitting Carmichael Hunt and Brent Tate. Tate comes forward, but only as far as Rayner. That's all he's got to do is Sean Long. Make sure that the ball hits terra firma. Lion at dummy half. He takes the return from Carmichael Hunt. Escapes one net. Peacock, whose second half try has given Great Britain this lead with the assistance of the boot of Sean Long. Here comes Berrigan, they're going down the wing and they found the winger. And away they go, Lockyer's on the inside, Lockyer's away! And Lockyer will score for the Australians. Scores will be level in a moment. <laughs> Wonderful, fluent attack from Australia. The ball fed out wide and the man in support of Inglis was Darren Lockyer, the captain. And Lockyer to the rescue for the Kangaroos. A wonderful try from him. His 30th try in all internationals.
for Darren Lockyer. Tremendous work by the hooker, Sean Berrigan, has not for the first time found himself on that left-hand side. Got the ball out to English, who kept his cool. And the Australian skipper knew exactly where to position himself. Look at the pass there. Leon Price was operating out on that right wing. Wonderful effort. Sheer quality. Well, I guess width was always going to be the way that Australia were going to try and beat Great Britain. And a poor decision, really, by Leon Price on the right wing has gifted Australia a chance to level the scores here. Width is the area that they've been getting the uh, Great Britain side with. And the quality of the passes from this man is really the start of their trouble. Lockyer, the man who has been named in the World 13 every single year since 1999. His try, his goal, the break from English, it's 12 apiece. We go back to the second game, don't we? And we saw something very similar here, except Greg Inglis actually scored the try against New Zealand. They were down 15-8. But it was Darren Lockyer who threw the pass, and it was Darren Lockyer who supported tonight. Very, very similar. He is the money man, Greg Inglis. They'll go to him to try to get him out of trouble. And with Lockyer involved, Paul Wellens lines him up nicely. And I think that's a big part of Greg Inglis' game that's improved, his ability now to set a man up and pass. We're singing his praises, but really, I think Leon Price needed to have a little bit more faith on the inside defender. I think he was going to get there. He had to stay out on English, didn't he, on that call? Yeah, I'd agree with you, Phil. It, probably the decision probably wasn't the right one, but it still took a special pass, didn't it? Well, Amelia's lost the ball, and John Wilkin has almost lost consciousness. It was a ferocious... It's, a, it's not, it's a Lee Gilmore, I beg your pardon. Lee Gilmore was brave. He stood his ground, and the ball dislodged. And Gilmore is having a word with him, the physio, he's OK. Here come Britain, with Long again. And here is Wilkin. And Wilkin is grounded 10 metres away from the line. That's Wellens, here is Long. This is Peacock, he'll take them on up the middle. Three tackles gone. Lee Gilmore gives the thumbs up to the physio, he's all right. He doesn't look it. I'm going to say, I'm not, so, not so sure about it. Long jinx away from one. I know it's early in the game, Eddie, but if the defensive solid and they're in a good position, don't be surprised if Sean Long goes for a one, if he can get himself sorted out. This is O'Loughlin. That's the last tackle. Now, where is Long? Well, he's set himself. He's in centre field. He's in front of the post. Will he go? No, he won't. He'll dab it behind the line, and it's plucked out of the air by Jamie Lyon. That was a beautiful kick, you know. And full credit to the Australian defence. They did not... Oh, they're offside. They didn't get sucked in into thinking that Sean Long was going to go for the one point. He set up as though it was, but the Australian defence... Talk about composure. They kept back in numbers. There was three there to take it. Only one, which was Gareth Ellis was in the red, white and blue to take advantage of it. And significantly, Steve-O, it was his former teammate that read the play. Jamie Lyon read Sean Long like a book. Well, he's been saying in the press all week here that uh, Jamie Lyon has been passing on information about so many of these Great Britain players, of course, that he has been involved with in Super League for the past two years. This is Mark O'Mealy. Lyon, a, a genius for St Helens over the past two years. And here now is uh, Anthony Tupo. Gets the ball away. Carmichael Hunt. Lockyer, though. There's the engineer in chief. There's the man who stokes the boilers for Australia. This is Hornby. Here is Lockyer coming from deep. Ball goes in. That's a knock on. That's a knock on. Went forward first time. Great Britain forcing the errors, no and, doubt. You know, that's a good sign, isn't it, really? The inside pass is the one which normally gets a team that are tiring. Great Britain have still got good communication on defence. Here's the opportunity when English went down the wing. Great Britain worked hard, senior, and inside in Roby, but they couldn't get there before Lockyer got the ball and got over the line. The and that put the scores level. And not surprising, Phil, that Brian Noble has sent out uh, Lee Gilmore onto that right wing. He's brought Leon Price into the centre of play. Playing now is back in his uh, selected position to stand off. Do you know, it's a tough sport, this idea. About five minutes ago, Lee Gilmore wasn't sure was it, whether he was in St. Helens or Sydney. He's just had to carry the ball again, though, now. Indeed so. Tough is an understatement. Talking of tough, Terry Newton is preparing to return. 
This is Peacock. Oh, the ball is dumped back again, and it's read perfectly by Cameron Smith, the Melbourne Storm skipper this year. Mason receives it on halfway. Here is O'Donnell again. Well, that's a type of panic football that we can do without. You know, just get yourself into a pretty good position. The kicking game from Sean Long has improved. You know what, Steve, it's unfortunate because I think Jamie Peacock's been outstanding for this great Britain side tonight. He's just led by example as a captain. His power running has been exceptional. His defence has been outstanding as well. But uh, one player who's just got on the field for Australia, Sam Thiday, he sat around for 57 minutes. So he's going to be pretty fresh. Watch him make an impact. Well, there he is, Sam Thiday. First touch for him. Plays the ball to Cameron Smith. Lockyer, cross kick. Oh! The ball is down, the referee will ask the video referee to make a decision. Well, did they decline? Has Hornby scored and taken the count? Well, this is amazing. Well, they were queuing Wellens, up on the inside. We said he was slippy, and Wellens just goes, keeps moving. They're looking to see if he's onside. He's onside, both of them are, but who's going to get it? They're both fighting for it. I think that looks like it's been dropped. Yep. Carol Trainer came in and there was an almighty collision with Hornby. What, why on earth they were both trying for it? He gets the hands to it. This is important. Can't be a try. Oh, you can't see from here. Can't not be a try. Well, from that well, angle. Can it be I from mean, this angle, we'll see better. But will they say that Gareth Rayner has deliberately taken out? No, he's going out? for the ball, Eddie. He's clearly going for the ball. No, I think he he's, just, he's looking he's, out of the way. He's, he's just trying to protect himself. That's occurring at 100 times faster than what we're just watching. That's no either. try. He has got no fingertips on that. I just thought Ben Ormby's OK, because it looks a serious knock to the head, and then his yep. head badly hits the ground as he spins round. To be fair to Rayner, he, he tried to stop as best he could. But I don't think this will be given. No, that is no try. Hornby looks like he's OK. The video referee decision is on its way. And it's no try. It's a 20-metre restart. Well, Gareth Rayner did enough. He did enough to put Ben Hornby off. He did a great job. We've survived two scares. The Willie Mason opportunity when he dropped the ball cold going through the line. And now that one where Gareth Rayner's done just enough, desperate to get back and deny the try. We can't survive there on our own line for the remainder of this game. Well, Sean Long knows that Willie Mason's out there. I think we all do. But it's interesting, Phil, you mentioned in the first half, that sometimes you need luck, sometimes you need things to go your way. We saw the Darren Lockyer kick go for with Jamie Lyon before and it went over the touchline. We just saw that in most cases would be a try, and it wasn't. So Great Britain have had a few things go their way, but they've earned it because they've put themselves in position. And they now have a penalty because Australia caught offside. Brian Noble was a bit concerned this week. He wondered just how uh, Ashley Klein would referee this match. Would he referee it like a Super League game or would he referee it like an NRL game? He's doing all right at the moment. We've got five more penalties in them. <laughs> Here comes Gareth Ellis again for Great Britain. They're in the Kangaroos territory. And here is Adrian Morley. Again, we need to come up with something different. Maybe early chip over the top or a little dink into the corner. It's Price and here is Yeeman. Kirk Yeeman certainly has earned his place on this tour this year. Leon Price again and he finds Sean Long. Long just pops it up for Peacock. And Peacock drives in once more. They try to wrap him up, they can't. Newton gets it away to Long and Long will skip his way past a couple. But Tyday was there. So too was Marco Mealy, Terry Newton. Newton will attack the line and drive it forward. I'd take the one on offer, I really would. Midway through this second stanza. Long isn't interested, he's dabbed it to the in-goal area. And Carmichael Hunt, under pressure from Sean O'Loughlin, has to knock the ball dead. Teasing yet again, Sean Long. Great kick. He's had a tremendous night as a little halfback. Pace the in-goal area out here before the match, Steve. Oh, eight metres and plus, really and both sides using it to good effect. Well, they like it wide. Good work by Carmichael Hunt. But this man is in top form now. He'll Went have an it. almighty headache tonight. He won't mind. 
if, they, mind if they win. If they win, he'll have a bigger headache, and it won't be anything to do with the the split over his eyebrow. And Lockyer with the dropout, and uh, Wilkin is on the end of it, and John Wilkin will take it back. Still looking for quicker play the balls, Great Britain, Ed. It's one of the reasons why Ashton Klein has heavily penalised the Kangaroos, slowing down the rook. Great Britain do suit a fast again with dummy half runs. Here's Newton. Ooh, that looked a bit forward. That did look forward to Adrian Morley. Cameron, wait! Wait! But Britain do want to get on with it quicker. This is Sean Long. Finds Leon Price. Price then back on the inside to Lee Gilmore. Gilmore! from this Australian defence. He has got up off the canvas, he has sorted out his mind and he has taken it to them. And he has scored a terrific try. His first test try at this level. Lee Gilmore on his 12th appearance for Great Britain gives the Lions the lead again. It's all about coming on the right angle. Second phase, he drifts across and it's poor defence. He had one thing on his mind. The big second roll is playing out on the right wing. He's no stranger to three-quarter work. And he just, wants the accolades and he got it. Well, they got a repeat set. That was the big play. Sean Long's ability to trap the ball in goal and force Australia to kick it out. Three rooks shifting the ball to the right-hand side, the top of the screen. And the timing of Gilmore run, who embarrassed two of Australia's best defenders when he went straight through them both. St. Helens connection for Great Britain again. Gilmore, Price with the pass, long here with the conversion to give Great Britain a six-point advantage again. It's Australia 12, Great Britain 18 at the Aussie Stadium Sean, in Sydney. Sean. Fully deserved. Sure you talk about classical. Day. Second phase, Rugby Make League, sure there, come okay? on the angle. They anticipated that he was going to offload. He just brushed straight through them. Didn't even attempt to hand off. He knew he had the speed and the strength to burst through. And the green and goals, they're in a hole. There's still plenty of time to go. Oh, he's come up with an error. Gareth Hawk on the first drive from the kickoff, And the error is forced. And Lyon is getting all the plaudits for the big hit on Gareth Hock. Well, how many times have we seen that through the history of rugby league? In the minds, you're still enjoying the moment of taking the lead against the Australians, and you just come up with the error like that. Steve Owen, in all the games I coached, I reckon I must have run out of ink that many times in my biro of writing down, you must complete your next set after you score. Why teams do it? I've never been able to fathom out. I've never been able to get the answer from players. Well, if you got the answer, Sean, you'd be a millionaire. Here well, is the run from Brent Kite. Well, sometimes I think you're thinking champagne rather than just doing your work. You'd have a lot of pens left at home. <laughs> Here is Petro Sivan Siva. Doesn't say much, Clarkie, but he gives us a smile, doesn't he? Wait, John, John. You know, Gareth Hock's just got to learn from that, Eddie. I know Australia in a great attacking position here, but this tournament goes for a few more weeks. It's not over yet, even if Australia do score here for Hock. No, and here is Jamie Lyon, the man who forced the error, thinking of the ball out the side door to Brent Tate. It's Lockyer, and the flat pass to Day, and Senior does well again. And helped out by Gilmore, and here is big Willie Mason driving to the line, and Britain deny him, and that's the last tackle, and Ricky Stewart is furious with his big second row. He wanted a second set of six, and big Willie did not realise he was the last, and that's the reason why the shot of Ricky Stewart with absolutely One, disgust two, written all over his face. Wait, wait, the wait, first wait. real opportunity that the Green and Golds have got near Great Britain for quite some time, and they've just blown it, and, and they know it. Ricky Stewart has a 100% success rate wait, wait, so far as the Australian coach. His uh, Roosters made it to three grand finals in a row, but they have failed to make the playoffs since, and Stewart sacked from the Sydney Roosters at the end of this season, but he's in charge of the green and goals here tonight, and he wants to keep this Tri-Nations 
on Australian soil. The Kiwis are the holders at the moment. And here goes Gareth Rayner. And he's hauled down by Jamie Lyon. This is Newton. Now it's with Long again. And he just drifts the ball over the top. But it bounces handily for Carmichael Hunt, who directs the traffic ahead of him. Big hit by O'Loughlin. Tremendous play there. Wait! No, that's a really good sign, isn't it? When you're 15 minutes from the end of the match, your chase is still very, very strong and keen. And really good pluses for Great Britain. Look at the tackling for Great Britain here. This is Berrigan. Move! Come on, Claire! Come on, Claire! Stand up flat. Knock on. Knock on by Berrigan. Well, Terry Newton was in the run. He could have he been penalised, and that's why they're questioning the no. official. No, he made a meal of it. And the referee's just said, no, he made a meal of it. Yeah. <laughs> Little doubt they were all over the top. Terry made no real attempt to get out of the way. That's the reason why the hooker Berrigan is uh, absolutely furious with Ashley Klein, the official. Not the best 28th birthday present that uh, Sean Berrigan would have wanted. That penalty going against him. Well, 14 minutes and counting. Well, we've seen, ahead. we've seen Australia just throw away the opportunity when they ran the power play on the last six, Willie Mason doing that. This is now important. And I'm sure that Brian Noble will get the message out that we just camp ourselves in the green and gold attacking quarter. Just keep kicking. Sean Long's doing that. This is Newton. Newton finds Senior. And Senior looking to offload. Saw Ty Day was coming towards him. Quick play the ball by Great Britain. This is Terry Newton. Newton finds Sean Long. And Long shows it to two. Flicks the pass to Leon Price. And Leon Price is hauled down by Willie Mason and Jamie Lyon. Two metres short, Newton. Finds long again. There's a drifted kick into the in-goal area, and Wellens is after it, and the ball beats everybody. Just a little bit too long, but again, a good idea. That's all we need. They know Australia will come out to the 20. Even though it was just a bit too strong, at least we can get our one line of defence set up against them. It's a long way to go now. We've got to make sure we're not sucked in out wide. That's where we're a little bit susceptible. Crowd getting on the back of Ashley Klein, claiming that Britain are offside on the fringes. John White! John White! White! 18-12, Britain lead. 12 and a half minutes remaining of this Gillette Tri-Nations match. Game four. And Britain could take a big, big stride towards the final back here on the 25th of November with victory here tonight. But the long way to go, but not with play like that, Australia. They're forcing it now, the green and goals, and they know it. The errors are lifting, and it'll be running through their minds also the opportunity on two occasions well, when Steve, they could have scored. I know you are the man who loves the one-pointer as Sean O'Loughlin is uh, receiving treatment on the sideline. But it's on now. This, this is the moment, isn't it? Eddie, My I'm, word. I'm still having therapy from the number of times and games I've been to when Australia pinched the match in the last five minutes. Just contain your excitement for a minute, please, because no, absolutely. when it gets to the last five minutes, as this showed against New Zealand, this kangaroo side is capable of putting 12 points on the board in, in the last couple of minutes, so you, you do have to play for the full 80 minutes. Oh, we're holding on to our emotions, don't worry, but I bet there are some people watching at home right now who are just starting to think. This is a Roby, and Roby will find Gareth Ellis. Well, if we do run for the post and we go for the one point, it's so important that we don't come up with an error. Remember, from the kickoff, from Gilmore's try, Hawk came up with the error. They've got to be lifting themselves, even if they've got the one point, stretched it to seven in the lead. Sean Long gives the ball to Kirk Yeeman. He went on a diagonal run. And that's a penalty to we'll Great take Britain. They'll take the two here. Never they mind the do. one. This could seal it. And that was brought about by Yeeman's ability to get on with the game, not waste time. He knew it had been tackled, but he wanted to get on with it. It was something that was lacking against the Kiwis last Saturday. Look at the penalty count. 10-4 in Britain's favour. You know what, if Australia do have more skill and speed than Great Britain out wide, I tell you what, we've got more strength in the centres. Yeeman and Senior are just too powerful for the Kangaroos to handle his yeah. determination. He scattered a few bodies again, Sean. Well, I think Kurt Yeeman's been outstanding in his debut. I mean, I've watched this kid grow from a, firstly a 15, 16-year-old player 
in the lower grades at Hull, coming through the academy, prolific try scorer, tremendous defender, and he's just matured and developed into a terrific rugby league player. And he is very, very powerful. I think to the point where he's deceptively strong. A lot of people don't realise that he's got a wicked fend and a tremendous defender. This is a big kick for Sean Long, three from three tonight. A big kick for Long, a massive kick for Great Britain in this Tri-Nations. And Long, oh, he's missed it! Sean Long has missed the kick. Britain will get the ball back, the ball did go down. That's right, composure. Ryan Melville has to get out that message. Keep an eye on everything, they'll be probably going for a quick one. Going to the touchline, they've done it. Sean Long's done the right thing, he's turned his back, made sure there was no chance of a knock-on. Now then, all they've got to do is make sure they get into a good position. Then I'd go for the one. OK, they've missed the opportunity of the golden two, but one will be sufficient. And they call it a test match because it tests you under pressure. That was a big pressure kick for Sean Long. Well, and remember, he hasn't kicked very often this year for St Helens because Jamie Lyon, the man in the green and gold tonight for the first time in three years, he has been doing the kicking for St Helens over the past two seasons. Here is John Wilkin. This is Jamie Roby. Here is Terry Newton. It's a time now in the last ten minutes for Big Hearts. Back he comes to Long. He's gone for the one pointer this time. And he's missed another. He has missed it again. It was the right option though. And he knows it as well. But again, Brian Noble must be shaking and sending out the message time and time again. Concentration. Oh, it's a penalty. We piggyback over the top. Terry Newton. Terry Newton. Terry Newton's not well, Eddie. And there's more, there's more injury news coming in from Bill. We saw uh, Sean O'Loughlin on the sidelines. Uh, having some treatment, he's got cramp in both calf muscles. Not surprising, he's put in an immense effort tonight as has uh, all this Great Britain side, but is it going to pay dividends? Wait, wait, wait! Willie Mason gets to his feet, plays the ball to Cameron Smith. Can Great Britain hold the green and gold machine out? John Sharp on the right, Brian Noble on the left. Looking at the clock, watching here as Petro Sivadasiva drives the ball forward again. Leon Price has gone out onto the right wing again. Will Australia pinpoint him? Here is Lockyer. They're going that way. Lockyer with a short ball. The pass though to Tupo. He was held by the tackle from Gilmore. Here is Lockyer. Lockyer back it comes to Cameron Smith. Nowhere to go, Cameron Smith. So he goes forward about six or seven paces no support either no one even thinking about the second phase this is the last one ricky stewart 100 percent as an australian team coach it's on the line lockyer the ball bounces forward who has it peacock does peacock have it yes he does was he offside i think it was a was he offside jamie peacock i think we said before the match we needed two things here tonight we needed some luck and we needed to take our opportunities for 72 and a half minutes, we've had both of those. Can we hang on? He was a Go mile offside. Three. Go. Well, this is Gilmore. A few of the times last week in New Zealand, we didn't get the rub of the green. We certainly got it then. It was bright. He could have painted a fence four or five times. He was in front. This is the last tackle here for Great Britain as Rayner gets to his feet, finds Leon Price. Price will just. Point the ball downfield, but it's straight into the arms of Carmichael Hunt. It was 72 minutes when the Australians struck they against the Kiwis two weeks ago and pinched the match. I can't 20 be points to 15. I can't believe that Leon Price put himself up in a position and now they've got themselves offside. Why on earth did Leon Price put himself to the dummy half, take a step and kick, when Sean Long has that position under control? You know, last week Brian Noble complained because he said he thought the game was four minutes short. He wouldn't complain if it was four minutes short tonight, Eddie. No, let's have the siren. Let's have the siren now. Six minutes to go. A big set of six coming up here for Great Britain to defend because the Aussies are deep in British territory. It's with Hein Marsh. If there's anybody out there in the green and gold, you'd have to be looking at Darren Lockie to turn this game again. Well, he's waiting in centre field. This is Willie Mason. 
three. Willie Mason goes down in the challenge. Stand. Now, James, let's wait, Gareth. Wait, wait. And that's Cameron Smith. Here is Lockyer, the danger man, attacking the line. Floats the pass back to Carmichael Hunt. Oh, ball goes to ground. Who's head and feet? Who got the hand to that? Who got the hand to that? It's a decision for the touch judge. Oh. Australia. Can't believe that. I'd like to see it, and we will. And I do believe that that call came from the British touch judge. He's got it right. Yep. So, more pressure. Gilmore's gone out onto that right wing. They really have been swapping around Leon Price and Gilmore, and uh, what do they have up the sleeve, the Aussies now? Lockyer to Lyon, and Lyon is tackled by Sean Long. You play the ball to Tate. Tate will give it to Lockyer again. Lockyer, good ball in field. Drive forward by Berrigan. Ricky Stewart barking the instructions to somebody. That's Cameron Smith. Here is Lockyer. Lyon wanted it into the corner. What a tackle! What a tackle by Adrian Morley! Here is Tate. Now it's with Cameron Smith again. It goes wide to Willie Mason, further wide to Berrigan. And Berrigan gets it out to the corner. English no way through. Leon Price standing his ground. Four tackles gone. Willie Mason in control. Seven receiver. Newton flew out of the line. And Long got a kick to it. And Long will pick it oh. up for Britain. And Sean Long has got Holby ahead of him. Here is Roby. Roby with Thayday on his back. And Thayday holds him down. Keep they your calm. The time march. They've got to keep the calm, Great Britain. Here comes Ellis. This is Wellens. They have the man on the overlap. It's oh. Rayner. Just panic. They kept basic rugby league football running through their brain and running through their veins. What a start to an international career to score the try. It was the tackle from Morley that would have shaken any double decker bus, never mind the Australian captain. It was Sean Long that got a boot to it. It bubbled, it was in the air. He was there forever and ever until Rayner. He says, we won. Oh, yes, we know you have. We hope Gareth Rayner with the try. He faced the Aussies in his test debut at Hull last year. He well, has faced them tonight, and you never know. Well, I carried this try track machine all the way to Australia in the hope that I'd be using it on a winning time. Look at that. Two perfect lines and four perfect smiles in the commentary box at the moment because that's a pretty good night's work for Great Britain. How quickly you can turn it around. Last week, Great Britain couldn't score well enough. They didn't look threatening enough. It's turned around here. Sean Long tells it on, keeps his calm. I think the maturity is shown as a player this season at St. Helens is typified in his play. Looks for the Lincoln support. Hindmarsh does well to pull down Roby. But again, look at this shift of play. Good, accurate passes. Australia short of numbers. Demon times a pass to perfection. And Rayner can't believe his luck. Gareth Rayner's try. Britain, at the moment, have a 10-point lead. Brian Noble has engineered, maybe, a victory here. Well, Along a lot of... with the conversion! Oh! oh! The post. You know, this is so significant, isn't it? There were players wearing the green and gold tonight that said they'd never heard of the likes of Leon Price. There was former coaches in this country who suggested that this man was dubbed to it. They were also suggesting that Great Britain Rugby League was amateur. Amateur. Well, the amateurs have shown the so-called professionals what grit and determination and quality and skill that exists in Super League in Great Britain. Can I just say that Leon Price has had a right scene to by the press in this country over the past five days because of comments about Blackpool Beach being better than Bondi and he doesn't like the country. It is nothing compared to what the Australians and Ricky Stewart are in for over the next seven days. I know one thing, when this tour's over and if we do win the competition, 
Leon Price will probably buy a bed and breakfast at Blackpool. <laughs> Surrender! That's Wellens, he takes the tackle. Stay Great Britain four. are Fight one face. minute and a quarter away from a second victory on this ground. Australia have only played here about a dozen times. They have the chance next week, Great Britain, to go all the way one to the point, final. One, one point from point. Long. He has kicked it. Sean Long. <laughs> Emotionless, the coaching staff. But the players will be flying higher than the jumbo that brought them over here tonight. I think Brian Noble's fully aware of it, that Great Britain have been able to win one in three test matches against Australia for about the last 20 years. They hope this isn't the only one that they win against the Green and Gold whilst they're down under in 2006. It's been a fantastic night for them and a great performance, but you have to back up and do it again if you want to lift the trophy. But it's something that we needed badly. And he has spoken all week about the Bulldog spirit and about the fact that Britain were confident and that they had prepared well. And they have put in here tonight a terrific 80 minutes. They are just 10 seconds away from beating the Australians in their own backyard. And Reina will dump it into touch. And that will do. That will do. Great Britain have won. And they are almost in the Tri Nations final on November the 25th. What a night! And plenty of pums here to see it as well. It was a torrid match at times. But Great Britain have won. They have scored four tries to two.